He's going to be presenting on his logical developing reasoning with puzzles. So you would help me welcoming Dr. Walker. Um, and um, glad to be here. This is um, exciting for me. Um, I was part of WCTM when I was an undergraduate student. I was a, a student here in Miami um, in the mid to late 80s. I guess I can say that. That's a good way to put it. And, um, and I participated with WCTM and went to OCTM conferences and participated in the, the, the kids' conference, too, presented on a Saturday with, with kids. And it was an awful lot of fun. It was really, really a good time. So I encourage you to, to consider doing these kinds of things if all possible. It's really a good opportunity to get out there and work with the kids. So, um, I want to share with you a little bit today about some of the work that I've been doing over the past um, couple of years. This is kind of my, my line of research right now and some of the work I've been doing. It has to do with um, what I call uh, language-independent logic puzzles language independent logic puzzles. So it has to do with the kinds of puzzles that um, you don't need to know the language or the culture for. So uh, a crossword puzzle is not a language independent logic puzzle, right? Because you need to know the language. Like you can't go pick up a, maybe somebody in your camera, you can't go pick up a, um, a Polish newspaper and do a crossword puzzle or a Japanese newspaper unless you know that language. But you also need to know the culture because they have a lot of culturally dependent clues and puzzles that you need to know a little bit about. Okay? I'm going to talk to you about puzzles that don't require knowledge of the language. But you could go pick up a newspaper or a puzzle magazine and do one of these kinds of puzzles. Do you have an idea about a kind of a puzzle that might be like that? Do you have an idea about a puzzle that might work that way? Tangrams. Tangrams is a great puzzle where you take the pieces and you're trying to rearrange them to create a shape. And that one's got a great aspect that deals with, um, with spatial reasoning and understanding how pieces fit together. I, I like tangrams a lot. Good, good. What else? Right. Is there another kind of a puzzle that you can work with? Yeah. Sudoku. And I love that you said it the right way. Too. Sudoku. That's awesome, awesome. Um, Sudoku is a puzzle where if you already know the rules for Sudoku, you can pick up a Sudoku puzzle in Japan. You can pick up a Sudoku puzzle in, in Russia, you can pick up a Sudoku puzzle in India and do it because it's the logic is still the same. Um, in fact, Sudoku puzzles, the, the name Sudoku comes from, from Japanese. Sudoku means single number. Um, and it has to do with the idea of what? One number, where, what's, what's, where are the rules for Sudoku? Have you ever done these puzzles? One number per box, per row, and Per column, so single number, that makes sense, right? One number, that's what the word Sudoku is. But I'm just here to tell you, go USA, that Sudoku puzzles actually originated in the United States. They uh, were invented in 1979, first appeared in Puzzle Magazine. They were written by, they were first of all by a, a retired architect from Indiana, uh, Howard Gardner, um, who liked this idea of these puzzles. He called them number place puzzles, and he first put them um, in, in, a, in a magazine. He, didn't really become very popular um, until a Japanese puzzle magazine by the name of Nikolai picked them up and, and renamed them. them cool, but actually what really made them really cool was they developed a computer program. Somebody developed a computer program that would generate them. Um, there are other kinds of puzzles. Any other language independent logic puzzles that people know anything about? Shikaku. Shikaku is another one, and that's one. Anybody ever hear of Shikaku before? A few people have. If you haven't, you're going to get to hear about today. It's one of the ones I'm going to talk about today. It's awesome. I'm going to share with you another one called Hashi Wokikero. There are two different Japanese puzzles that come from the Japanese puzzle war. But what I like about them is you don't even know Japanese to do that at all. Okay. All right. Good. Good. So um, if you have access to a pencil, I'd recommend it. If you don't, then just make your mistakes with conviction. <laughs> and with the idea that it's all okay. Take one, pass it on down, because you can dial it in, and they don't use it outside, I'm not counting. Okay. And there's a couple of other people who should have it on around this. 
Do you hear that? I teach driving. Do you like diving? What's diving? You mean like swimming? Yeah. No, I don't drive. I do. Jumping off the diving. I need this. I need you not to look ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry. Please don't look ahead. I want you to kind of stay focused on what's here. And I, and I do want you to write on these. If you would like a white copy to use for something else, I have the, the, the word file. I don't know what the best way is, Dr. Harper, to distribute this. But I've got this in a, an electronic file. I'd be happy to share with anybody. Okay, so I use the TM to help kind of distribute that as well. Once the extras get down here, spread them around to the back. Okay, you have more copies. Okay, some more copies. Raise your hand if you don't have a copy. Raise your hand if you need a copy. Yet. <laughs> Sorry, you're out of way. Nope, we got one. Okay, good. We got a next one back right there, Dr. Edwards. There's one right there. Thanks. All right, so the first one is one that Peter mentioned, Chicago. Okay, so what I'd like for you to do is I'm not going to tell you the rules yet. I'm going to show you one example puzzle on the left and its solution on the right. One sample puzzle on the left and its solution on the right. Now, I understand that in science you do not figure out things from one data point. Okay? It is not enough data to do this. But that's what I'm going to ask you to do. Okay? Um, take one minute right now and talk to somebody sitting nearby about something you observe about puzzle and the solution, you can jot down some notes on the lines that are down there. I'm not telling you the rules yet, but what the goal is, okay? Somebody might ever say no? Yes. Could somebody be thinking, now that doesn't sound right. What might they be thinking about? Square. Square's not a rectangle, is it? It's a good chance for us to talk about that. All right? Squares, we say rectangles and squares, obviously, because squares are kind of rectangles. Okay, good. Shikaku is Japanese for four corners or divide the box. One of the things you want to do is divide it into shapes that have four corners, which are rectangles. Okay? Awesome. That's what the word shikaku means in Japanese. Close. Okay? What else? What else did you observe, please? Um, the number has to have that many boxes. So like, like in the example in the corner, there's six, and that six has to be inside a box of six. I like what you had to say. <laughs> is that all correct? Is that true in every case? Mm -hmm. Can somebody say that adding a little bit more mappy words? <laughs> that area. <laughs> area? It was perfect. We could also say the area of the rectangle is equal to the number that you see inside, right? 
Right. Cool. Excellent. It covers that many squares, which we also call the area. And I'm never going to miss a chance to make sure you use the, um, the academic language that we want to be talking about and just keep using those words. It's always good to get those words out. Okay. <laughs> what else? Any other observations? All of the <clears throat> sub-squares need to be used but no overlap. Nice, nice. Every square gets covered and none of the rectangles overlap with each other. Every square gets used once. Every square gets used, every square gets used once, exactly once. Wonderful. Other observations? Other observations? Uh, the numbers are only 2 through 10. The numbers, in this case, are only 2 through 10. Every number from 2 through 10? Could there be a 7 in one of these puzzles, perhaps? Perhaps. Awesome. Other observations? I feel like if you get on the wrong path, you're going to be on the wrong path for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome point. These puzzles have exactly one solution. These puzzles have exactly one solution. In fact, every one of the puzzles that I'm going to share with you has exactly one solution. The solution is unique. And that rule actually lends itself to some interesting <laughs> strategies sometimes. Okay? If you, so let's say we, we got everything, we'll see. If you didn't see that solution on the right, where would you start on the left? How would you begin to get to this point on the right, over here on the left? Dr. Edwards, your hand is higher than the rest. <laughs> no, please. Um, that six is catching, I've never played these before, but the six is catching my eye, like the bottom uh, right hand corner. This, this six right down here? Yes. Why does that catch your eye? Well, I know that the six and the five aren't going to be in the same rectangle, so it kind of forces me to go upward, but not over. Oh, all right, so it would make sense that it would kind of look like this, right? So if yeah. you were drawing this, you could kind of say, all right, I've got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and kind of draw in what that rectangle would look like. Are you sure that that's the only way that six could be covered? I think I am, but I'm afraid. <laughs> because I asked the question. Yes. And that's one thing we need to make sure in our, in our classrooms. That just by the, the teacher asking the question, that shouldn't mean the student should feel like he or she is wrong, right? I wasn't really afraid. I know you <laughs> I know you better than that, Dr. Edwards. All right, cool, cool. What else? Are there other places you could move? Well, you could do that in all of the corners, like the five going down, the four going over, and the three going over. Ah, each of the corners. Kind of has that same kind of setup. It's got some nice starting points. Okay? Because this puzzle has exactly one solution, we want to talk about the logic, the, the reason that kids can use or solvers can use to find what that one solution is. And just like any good problem solving problem, there is one answer, but there may be more than one way to get to the answer. My students in my class should be nodding their heads saying, yep, we've heard that before, okay? <laughs> Every puzzle can have more than one way to get to the answer, more than one strategy you could use, but there is one final answer to get to. That's what I like about these. That's one of the many things I like about these. Oh, I want to ask, no, I'm not going to ask yet. We're going to turn the page, okay? On the next page, I have two puzzles for you, puzzles B and C. And I do not have solutions for them here. I would like for you to work with a partner on doing puzzles B and C right now. You'll notice at the top of the page I have listed the rules and you guys didn't nail all the rules. And what your goal is for these puzzles. You understand the idea behind Shikaku. What I haven't told you are all the really cool things that you can have which you kind of also play on. Okay? So will you please take a few minutes right now and work with the partner and uh, draw see the rectangle around it. Okay? So there's an area that is not. Look at this. What if I did that? Look the area is not. Okay. Squares in it. Can you see a way to make it not exactly narrow? 
to make a nine, to make a rectangle that has nine squares and doesn't have this number. Yeah, draw a boundary. Yeah. What's your puzzle for? Look at this. I'm going to try and draw one that has. Look at this one, it says five. I can't go this way because that would be an even number. I think I can do this. Does that have five in it? Five. Okay, I'm gonna turn. See if you can pull that hand that has four. Is that the only one that has four? Could you also do this? Go that way and have four. So I'm not sure if that is correct. Let's do ones that we know there's only one way to do it. You know what I'm saying? And this one too, look. I don't think this is right. Look, that has to have a 12. But I can't draw a 12 around that. I'm gonna erase this one. Look at this. Let's make five bottom, good answers. I'm asking you to jot down some notes about some strategies you're using when you're solving these puzzles. You can think about a couple of strategies five. you're using. Can you, can you fit 12 around that one? Yeah, you can. This is better front. Can you get this better front? What's that? Can you get this better front? One, two, three. Four, five, I just solved it. I solved it. <laughs> I solved it. I just figured I have to nope. tell you based on how terrible I was in class. No. Nope. No. Look at this one. How many squares in that? Show me. I don't know. No. <laughs> I've been impressed on the fact that I actually did one of them correctly. Yeah. I agree that six can do this. Is this where you have a four in it? Where's the four?
Any kind of, was it harder than the first one? Yes. Well, harder than yes. the first one because I gave you the answer for the yeah. first one right next to it, right? No. Yeah. no. But there was some stuff about B that was a little bit harder. What about C? Even harder yet? No. Yeah. No? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Is there a starting point for puzzle B? Let's start with one on the left. Are there any starting points for puzzle B? Where could you start with puzzle B? Top left corner where the 9 is. All right, good. And I put that there on purpose. It's a good starting point, top left. Okay? And there is only one place to put a 9. Put that 9, right? It doesn't cover up other numbers. Good. Are there any other starting points for puzzle B, please? I started with a 12 on the right. Oh, that 12 on the right, you could also start with, right? There's only one way to fit that 12 in. And that like forces the 6 and the 4. And then that starts to force some of these other things. Nice. So it's kind of, once, once you do one thing, it has an impact on maybe something else that you could do next. Right? So for example, that 12 on the right hand side has a big impact on this 4. Right now, this 4 has a couple of things that it could do, right? It could be a 4 going this way, or it could be a, a 2 by 2 box. But once this 12, there's only one way you can cover this 12. Once you cover that, it forces this 4, which then forces this 9. I like that. Okay. In fact, this makes me think about, for those of you who might be teaching high school geometry at some point. It makes me think about that step-by-step -step process that kids do when they do a proof. First I know this, then I know this, once I know this, therefore this has to be true. Okay? To me, this is really what I call a proof readiness type of activity. Once you know something has to be true, why do you know it's true? What does it force you to know after that? I like that aspect of these puzzles. And I think that there is some, some benefit to that. In fact, I did a workshop with teachers this summer up in northern Ohio. And one of the teachers who had been to a talk I had given at OCTM two years ago said he has been using these with his class. And they've developed all these little theorems and corollaries about the puzzles. And they've given them names. And it's helped them be better when they do proofs. I want to move on to puzzle C real quick. Is there a starting point for puzzle C? Is there a puzzle C starting point? Did you find one? There's a lot that feel like this is close, but there's a couple of options. Is there a place to start puzzle C? The nine? This, this nine right here? This nine right here? Is there only one way I can cover that 9? Yes. Yeah. There is. There's not enough room for a full length of 9, but once you start that 9 there, then that chain of events plays out. This 7 has to go down here to reach this box up here. You've got to cover the 5, etc. Okay? But I think, I think that's the only one that you know for sure has to go there to start out. So finding that starting point, to me it's like this. when you do a proof, where do I begin? Once you find that key, that little thing that gets you started, then the rest of the stuff starts to fall into place. Is that all right? Other comments? Ian, did you have something you wanted to say? Did you have something you wanted to say about any of these? No? All right, good. Take you your hand up earlier. I wanted to give you the chance to say something if you wanted to. Now, I kind of get these puzzles. It's you're starting to see them? Yeah, I'm starting to see them. Awesome. You try awesome. to get them in the boxes and the uh, numbers had to be equal to what the number. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's great once you're starting to get that idea about how the area and stuff works. Okay? I want to show you a website that you could also take a look at some of these things. Okay? Um, there's a website for the Japanese puzzle magazine called Nikolai. N I P O L I. Okay? Nikolai.com. And it has some sample puzzles. This is the free part of the website. You can also become a member and pay every month 
and get access to hundreds and hundreds of other puzzles. Okay? But there's a free part of the website to get a good start. I also like the interactive nature of the puzzles as they appear on this website. So, for example, here are a, here's a list of some of the puzzles. I think there are about 13 different puzzle types that they've put on the website right now. And if you can find the one that we're talking about, Chicago, you can follow this link and then look at a puzzle online. Okay? So this one should look familiar to you. It is Puzzle B. I took a couple of them off here just to put on here so we could actually see them being played out. Okay? Is that correct? Is there somebody, this is a technique that I've learned from Dr. Edwards watching. Is there someone who would like to come up here and, and try out this, uh, this website and try out how this, uh, this app works? Who'd like to come on down? Now nobody wants to. Right, come on down, come on down. Okay? So, what do you think you might want to do to draw the box around the nine? Anybody have any ideas? Click and drag. Click and drag? Sounds good to me. Oh, no. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. You guys saw something, didn't you? <laughs> what did you see? What did you see? It showed the number. It showed a number. Do the 12. So before you let go, it tells you what the area of that thing is. Does it tell you if it's right or not? No. It tells you that you have a rectangle of that area. So go ahead and like do anything else. The pressure's on. Will it let you create a rectangle that has the wrong area? Great question. Can you create a rectangle with the wrong area? You can't create one. But it was shaded. It wasn't shaded dark. Well, it also covered the four. That it way. also covered the four, but you can make a rectangle that's the wrong area. You can leave it that way. And in fact, that can be a helpful tool down the road. There are some puzzles where that strategy can be a useful intermediate step. So watch what happens. Now click on where it says check. Did it and it took you a minute, 56 seconds. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right, there you go. I've actually done these on a smart board with a group of students and kids, and they just took their finger and dragged them. And it was a real nice interactive lesson with kids. Okay? Um, what I also like about these is it gives you the solution for these puzzles. But the solution has been recorded. And it was a 39 second, not to make anybody feel bad, it was a 39 second solution. And you can watch somebody who solved the puzzle, and they are also using problem solving strategies. You can watch what order they, this person has done those in. So you can see, if you're stuck, you can kind of go back and watch somebody as it plays out. What order were those done in? And they're done in a very logical sequence, okay? And if you're bored with that, you can change the speed <laughs> 32 times as fast. <laughs> but, um, but it's nice to watch a solution playing out. Okay? Here's the second puzzle. Uh, here's puzzle C that you guys have on that same page, right? Okay? So the solution, if you want to see it, if you want to see what the final solution is, you can watch it play out. Okay? But that's the, that is the unique solution for that puzzle. Can you slow that down? Nope. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Do it again. So this one probably starts at the knot. Oh, my God. Kind of in the same sequence we've kind of talked about. Okay? Cool. What are some strategies that you made notes of? Do you have any strategies that you made any notes of? Like My strategy is to start at the corner and see if those will work. If not, then I try to find a nine that's blocked so there's only one, one solution for a nine. Why might a corner be a good place to start? Because it forces, like, um, you only have, like, one, two, maybe even three options. You've got fewer directions to go, right? 
end, the nice place to start. Edges also. Okay, the middle can be a little bit tougher sometimes. What else? Um, I like numbers like five or two or even three because you can't make a square from it. You have to make a full rectangle. So you, you only have like two options for it. I wish we had a name for numbers like five and three. Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Academic language. Right. Awesome, awesome. Prime numbers. Here's a great place to talk to kids about them. why is a prime number such a nice thing? Because it has fewer options. It has to be a one by whatever. It could go different directions, okay? But it has fewer possibilities. Those are nice. But you said nine was also a nice number. Why was nine such a nice number? Has to be a three by three. <laughs> has to be a three by three or a one by nine or a nine by one. It has fewer options. Good. What else? The large numbers, depending on where they're placed, limits them to where they can actually go. Nice. Depending on placement, larger numbers may have some more options, may have some more possibilities. This puzzle, when you turn the page, this is one that doesn't have a lot of large numbers. It has a lot of little numbers. And some of the strategies play out a little bit differently. There is a 10 that only has one option. Yeah. So it's a good starting point. Yeah. So larger numbers sometimes have more of, have, have a better way to get started. Okay? I just want you to know I've given you some 10 by 10 puzzles. Okay? And these are a lot of fun to work on. Um, I have not given you larger ones, but I want you to know that larger ones do exist. Okay? I just pulled up this 18 by 10 puzzle. Okay? Well, you say that now, just wait. Okay? Here's an 18 by 10 puzzle. Can you see a starting point for this puzzle? Um, the numbers have it like grouped together. So um, five on the right can only go down. Yeah. Make three only go up. That three can only go up. And then on the other side, same thing. Mm -hmm. Like three can only go down. Oh, yeah, three can only go down. That five. Right. Look at the edges. Look at, the sometimes there's the nines in the middle. Locked in. Yeah. There's some nice. There's some nice starting points for a puzzle like this. Okay. Um, you can get all these on on that website very easily and look at some of these other puzzles. Um, but the puzzles get increasingly more difficult. Sure. And increasingly larger to a point where they look like this. So yes. I promise these only have one seat. Is that true? Puzzle four, you say you could change something. What, what do you mean you could change them? the way the boxes are drawn? Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys work for a second, look at some puzzles. I want to look at that puzzle. Let's take it. Let's take it. You got to get the blank one. Make one of these two pieces. I like so, it turns out that along the way, puzzle four felt like there's more than one solution. But once you finish the whole puzzle, I promise you there is not one solution. It, things fall apart at the end. These are very carefully designed so that it is impossible to have more than one solution. In fact, one time on this website, about a year and a half, two years ago, somebody had a puzzle up there that actually did have two solutions, and they pulled it off, and they put up this huge apology saying, we're really sorry, this puzzle had two solutions, and I've never seen it again. They took it off of there. So um, they're very careful, because that's one of the things that they really are are pushing for is unique solutions. Okay? Um, comment. There's an iPhone app just in case somebody's wondering. There's an iPhone app. In case anybody wants to look to one of my and now if I see if iPhone's out right now we're in class. I don't know. Alright, cool. Um, can I ask, do you see anything else interesting about a, a blank grid like this? 
Anybody notice anything interesting? Cassidy, do you have any comment? Okay. Anybody have anything that you've noticed? I want to add. Go ahead, please. It's a little difficult. It gets bigger, 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 and then you try to figure out the layers. That's true. The bigger they get, the more difficult they are. They can even put some bigger numbers. Are there any huge numbers in this one? I see a 10, I see a 12 in this one. Um, there are some that they have on here that have some crazy numbers in them. Let me see if I can find one real quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that one. I love the fact that they put 17s in the middle of this one, which make you go, Easy puzzle. I know where those go, but after you put those down, then the rest of the puzzle. I'm not saying like these would be what you give to like your students, but you could use them kind of to show them like patience and a problem to like prove to them like it's gonna take time to get it. Like even if you can't get it now, kind of do like at the beginning, like the first day of class, like show them like even it's hard. Like I think there's a lot of there are a lot of ways that you can use puzzles. Like yes. Yeah. Do some some reasoning, some sense making but also some other kinds of things, like perspicacity, perseverance, all sorts of good things. I'm thinking differentiation, like uh, these guys can be working on puzzles, and you could be working on a puzzle, and at the end of the day, we're all saying that we learned about shikaku, but we're learning it at the level that we're comfortable. And the same strategies apply no matter what puzzle you're talking about. You can still be talking about the same things, but yet using different level of puzzles. Yeah. Sizes, everything, differentiation is great with this. What else? These puzzles are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I get I get that a big amen. I agree with that. That's awesome. All right, good. What else? What else? Any other comments about these before I show you something else? I know I had a teacher who gave me a puzzle as like a bonus assignment because even if you didn't understand the concepts in class like hundred percent, if you put the time and effort into completing the puzzle for a long time and you got credited yeah. for it. And you know, I've actually seen something really interesting play out with these puzzles. I have seen a classroom where the best and the brightest mathematics students are not the best at solving the puzzles. And some of the students who struggled and didn't have as much success in the regular math class were actually very successful at doing the puzzles because it was a different way of thinking. And that gave them some confidence, some excitement. Why does this have to be the bonus? Why can't this be a part of the curriculum instead? And I've seen it as the curriculum. In fact, I wrote a, a little research project where teachers use this as part of their curriculum. And kids were developing their reasoning skills, but then they applied to other situations. I agree. Other. I think also like it just encourages collaboration. So I know in AP Physics we did this every single day before class, and I could do physics, but I could not do puzzles to save my life. And I needed my friends to get through these darn warm-up puzzles. <laughs> like, you get to know each other, then you meet people you can work that's with, nice. and that's nice. I don't know, that's what I think about. Well, <laughs> and for me, my life is puzzles. I have lived around the world of puzzles since I was in fifth grade, and my sister got me a subscription to Games Magazine. I had been a member and a subscriber to Games Magazine since 1979. And I love this. I have boxes of these magazines, okay? And it has been a really nice thing for me to think about the, the problem solving and the reasoning, but it's also then played out really nicely for my career as a mechanics. So that's kind of fun. I want to ask one more thing, though. No one has said this other thing yet about these puzzles. And I want you to, to think about the issue of rotational symmetry when you look at one of these puzzles. I want you to think about the issue of rotational symmetry when you look at one of these puzzles. Does anybody have anything you want to say about the issue of rotational symmetry when you look at one of these puzzles? Does anybody have any clue what I mean by the phrase rotational symmetry? Far away students? People who have 217. Okay, what else? Or 218? Yeah. Um, if you take your origin at the very middle of, I guess, all of the puzzle in general, uh -huh. um, so between in the middle of the 70s and the 9s there in the middle, uh -huh. um, and you, that's your point of origin, and you rotate it 100, well, 180 degrees, um, it would essentially, like if you can see the patterns in the top left corner and the bottom right corner, the patterns are both exactly the same. They're different numbers. But the numbers are in the same exact box locations. The circle numbers all land on top of every circle numbers if I turn this upside down. You see that? 
Um, if I were to take, um, let me go back to my document camera, okay? Let me go back to the document camera. I'm going to pull up puzzles one, two, three, and four that you have on your paper. And you may have things drawn on them. Let me show them to you right here. Every one of these puzzles has rotational symmetry of the placement of the starting numbers. Is what Corey was giving me. Okay? Do you see that if I turn this upside down, this pen fell apart? If you, if you turn this upside down, this three would land on this four. This six would land on that nine. This ten would land on that four. If you turn it upside down, the pattern is identical. So what? So what? Do you think that matters? Should you care about that? What do you think? Hmm? Yes. <laughs> yes, I love it. I shouldn't ask a simple yes or no question. Tell me why you think that might matter. Does that do anything for you? I don't. That's okay. You may you may pass. It's awesome. Um, sometimes it's nice to look at something from a different angle. So if you flip the paper, you might see a different way. What else? Do you think that it created? Yeah, Dr. Evans. Are the? Oh, never mind. I was going to say, do the, are, the are, are the solutions, do they exhibit you, rotational symmetry? If you turn symmetry? a couple of pages and you see the solutions, are the solutions rotational They're symmetry? not, right? No. Why are they not? The numbers are different, right? So maybe it's say, a design thing? It's, it is a design thing. It is an aesthetic thing. They look nicer. When you see a puzzle like number one, do you see the, the patterns that kind of pull you in? Like the one we were doing earlier with, um, like once you find one part that has to go up or down, if the other side looks exactly like it, then you know that has to go. Nice, nice. Yeah, you guys were noticing some things that when there was a part of the puzzle where um, on puzzle eight, if you find out this five down here can't go up, it has to go this way, it makes me want to look and see this other one. Oh, it's also a five. Nice. And I can build it going the same way. It gives me some ideas, some places to go. Okay? But really, it's all about aesthetics. The people who create these puzzles, actually, these are all hand-created. None of these puzzles. Nikolai will not publish a puzzle that is computer-generated. These are all created by hand. They think they, even though these could be, and people have written, you can find websites with millions of Chicago puzzles on them, and there is no symmetry to the starting grid at all. And they're just not as interesting. They're much more interesting when you're solving them. You can tell these are, these are hand-made that somebody put some time and effort into thinking about how to place these numbers. And I like that. I think it's really cool. Okay? I want to show you one other kind of puzzle. Can we turn the page? I have one more puzzle type to show you. Puzzle number seven is called Hashi Wokakero. Can you say that after me? Hashi Wokakero. Hashi Wokakero. Nice. Hashi Wokakero. At the top, I Describe it a little bit, but now I want you to look at the puzzle. I've given you one puzzle with a solution. And I am running low on time, and I will get you out of here at 8, okay? Tell me an observation you can make right now. What do you notice about the puzzle and its solution? What do you notice? Um, the number in the circle, like, indicates how many lines are there. Did you guys all hear that? The number in the circle indicates how many lines Emanate, I love that word. <laughs> Emanate from that circle. Is that true in every case? Mm -hmm. You see that? Sweet. What else do you notice? The lines are parallel to the sides of the rectangle. Excellent. The lines are parallel to the sides of the rectangle, which means the lines are either horizontal or they're vertical. There are no diagonal lines anywhere in the puzzle. Awesome. Thank you. What else do you observe? You can have one or two lines going from each like, side. Great. So you can have one or two lines. Do you ever see three lines coming together in a group? And that is true. You don't only you don't see one example here, but it is true that lines will only be singles or pairs. Good. What else? Not all the um, numbers are connected. Not all of the numbers are connected. What do you mean by that? Like the one, the two, and the left. Ah, I see what you mean. Yeah. This one and this two, even though you could start out that way, they end up not being part of the solution. In fact, the solution is unique. 
And if you did draw this one and this two this way, you would get stuck at some point. So part of the puzzle is figuring out what do you do? How do you get started? There is another, there is another important rule that nobody has observed yet. And this is a hard one to see. Do you have an idea? I was just gonna say like every number is connected to a different number. Every number is, con is connected to a different number. Right, like you don't have like a blank circle number out the side. That's part of it. That is part of it. That's important. It goes a little bit beyond that. If you think of these things as islands, in fact, the idea of, of this puzzle, how should you know, build bridges? If you think about these numbered circles as being islands out in the middle somewhere, and you're building bridges. You have to connect every single one so you can go from one to the other. You have to be able to travel from one island to any other island by traveling along bridges. Do you see how they're all connected in some big grid in some way? If you start at this one and you wanted to get to this two, you could get there. And you could get there maybe even, oh, no, nope, other ways. But you have to be able to travel between any two islands. You guys see that? Okay, that is true. By the way, another rule is that the bridges cannot cross any other islands and they can't cross any bridges. You see that? The bridges never cross other bridges. So there's a bunch of rules, which makes this a little bit overwhelming, but I contend fun. All right, here we go. Puzzles B and C. Let's do a little bit of this together. Oh my gosh. What the heck? How are we going to start puzzle B? This is just way too much. I just can't even begin. Does anybody have an idea where you can start puzzle B? Well, what's so great? Oh, you guys, I should be in language arts and mathematics because I'm going to make a, a, a poem right now. What's so great about the number eight? <laughs> what's so great about the eight? There's only one possibility. And what is that possibility? You can each of the numbers. It can only go four different directions, up, down, left, and right. So I have to do that. I have to do that. Have we established that it can only have one or two and no more? I, I kind of just went ahead and said, yeah, that's true. Okay. That is exactly true. And that is one of the rules. I do have all the rules written up here. Um, and that is one of the rules. Okay. Good question. What else? What else? The, um, the sixes. Yeah. You can only go the three directions because there's no number. Underneath it for the bottom six. And so, like no this number. six down here. Mm -hmm. and I can only go three directions. So, therefore, one way. Two bridges in each of the three directions. And the other six as well because there's none on the left. Oh, and this six can't go to the left. Can you have three lines emanating off of a. No. no. You may have three lines emanating off of a number, but not in the same direction. There can only be one or two lines connecting any two islands. Okay. That is correct. Good. The one at the top has to go to the five because it can't cross. Oh, now that I've drawn these bridges right here, this one has to go to the five, to the right. Okay? Other observations. Well, just building off that, there's a five. It already has three lines, and you can go one direction. Ah, nice. This goes one, this goes two. And those are done, each of those, so this one has to go two to make up the five. Okay? So now you can continue to fill in some of the answers. Okay? These take a little bit more work to get on to, but this is another example of a puzzle that has exactly one solution, but has multiple ways to get there. Okay? Multiple ways to get to it. Okay, while you play with that just for one more minute, I'm going to pull up the website and I'm going to show you some funky stuff. I'm going to log into the members site on here. I've paid my membership fee once a month of 550 yen. 
once a month. Is it like five dollars? How much is? It's like six or seven bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't look at my taskers. about these Hashi Woken Drive. I've given you nowhere near enough time to explore them. Okay? Okay, not as fun. That's okay. I don't take it personally. I didn't invent these. They have more rules, which is a little bit more onerous, if I can say that word. Onerous. Okay? So, if, um, listen, if, once you get those rules in mind, I think these puzzles have a lot of really nice potential to them. And kids really play these out nicely. This is the puzzle that the teacher who told me about this up in, up in the Akron area talked about. He said his students came up with all these theorems and postulates and stuff. And it was really, really fun for them to do this about solving all these kinds of puzzles. And it really helped them think about doing proofs in class. Okay? People who've invented these puzzles, who designed these puzzles, have lots of fun with them. I'm going to show you a puzzle right now. This is on the paid part of the website. It's about to Baku, which means really difficult. I don't even know where to put this one on the website. Um, it's an extra difficult puzzle, but it is something really interesting. Oh, Somebody created this puzzle and used only fours. What a fun little exercise as a puzzle designer to say, I want to make a really hard puzzle that uses only one number. And it is a bear. I've, I've worked on this puzzle. I have solved this puzzle and it took me, I'm not going to say how long, I'm embarrassed about using my valuable time to do this puzzle. And, but it was a really, really fun exercise. And it's really pretty cool. Uh, oh, shoot, my time is going. All right, anyway. Um, but I'll show you, I'll, I'll let you watch the solution for this one being played out. The person saw this one in 13 and a half minutes. I'm going to actually have to speed this up a little bit to get this in time. But you can watch the solution being played out. You'll see another neat strategy of shading in numbers. What's going on with that? Once it's been satisfied, once you've drawn all the bridges to that one, you shade in the number. Why might that be a useful thing? Because you know you're done with that number. You don't have to look at it anymore. It's a really nice strategy. You can try to improve it by hand as well. So there is a unique solution to that puzzle. There are tons and tons of these up on their website. And they are, they are an awful lot of fun to play around with. Okay? They don't even have to be very big to be interesting like this. Okay? There's a fun puzzle right there that just was so unique in its design, they put this one up on the website as an interesting tool. Okay? So, I encourage you to play with these. Think about how you could use these yourself in a classroom. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of these, and I've done a lot of workshops with teachers. And I'll be presenting at OCTM, at NCTM in Chicago, and at NCTM in Denver. Um, in April, about uh, puzzles. I thank you all very much for your time. Is there anything else?